as showing the computer some training images of a particular object, let's say cats, and design a model that learn from these training images. How hard can this be? After all, a cat is just a collection of shapes and colors. And this is what we did in the early days of object modeling. We tell the computer algorithm in a mathematical language that a cat has a brown face, a chubby body, two pointy ears, and a long tail. And that looked all fine. But what about this cat? <laughs> it's all curled up. Now you have to add another shape, a viewpoint to the object model. But what if cats are hidden? What about these silly cats? <laughs> now you get my point. Even something as simple as a household pet can present an infinite number of variations to the object model. And that's just one object. So about eight years ago, a very simple and profound observation changed my thinking. No one tells a child how to see, especially in the early years. They learn this through real-world experiences and examples. If you consider a child's eyes as a pair of biological cameras, they take one picture about every 200 milliseconds, the average time an eye movement is made. So by age three, a child would have seen hundreds of millions of pictures of the real world. That's a lot of training examples. So instead of focusing on solely on better and better algorithms, my insight was to give the algorithms the kind of training data that a child was given through experiences in both quantity and quality. Once we know this, we knew we needed to collect a data set that has far more images than we have ever had before, perhaps thousands of times more. And together with Professor Kylie at Princeton University, we launched the ImageNet project in 2007. Luckily, we didn't have to mount a camera on our head and wait for many years. We went to the internet, the biggest treasure trove of pictures that humans have ever created. We downloaded nearly a billion images and used the crowdsourcing technology like Amazon Mechanical Turk platform to help us to label these images. At its peak, ImageNet was one of the biggest employers of the Amazon Mechanical Turk workers. Together, almost 50,000 workers from 167 countries around the world helped us to clean, sort, and label nearly a billion candidate images. That was how much effort it took to capture even a fraction of the imageries a child's mind takes in in the early developmental years. In hindsight, this idea of using big data to train computer algorithms may seem obvious now. But back in 2007, it was not so obvious. We were fairly alone on this journey for quite a while. Some very friendly colleagues advised me to do something more useful for my tenure. And we were constantly struggling for research funding. Once I even joked to my graduate students that I would just reopen my dry cleaner shop to fund ImageNet. After all, that's how I funded through my college years. So we carried on. In 2009, ImageNet project delivered a database of 15 million images across 22,000 classes of objects and scenes, organized by everyday English words. In both quantity and quality, this was a non-precedented scale. As an example, in the case of cats, we have more than 62,000 cats of all kinds of looks and poses and uh, across all species of domestic and wild cats. We were thrilled to have put together ImageNet and we wanted the whole research world to benefit from it. So in a tech fashion, we opened up the entire data set to the worldwide research community for free.
Now that we have the data to nourish our computer brain, we're ready to come back to the algorithms themselves. As it turned out, the wealth of information provided by ImageNet was a perfect match to a particular class of machine learning algorithms called Convolutional Neural Network, pioneered by Kunihiko Fukushima, Jeff Hinton, and Yellow Room back in 1970s and 80s. Just like the brain, it consisted of billions of highly connected neurons. A basic operating unit in a neural network is a neuron-like node. It takes input from other nodes and sends output to others. Moreover, these hundreds of thousands or even millions of nodes are organized in hierarchical layers, also similar to the brain. In a typical neural network we use to train our object recognition model, it has 24 million nodes, 140 million parameters, and 50 billion connections. That's an enormous model. Powered by the massive data from ImageNet and the modern CPUs and GPUs to train such a humongous model, the convolutional neural network blossomed in a way that no one expected. It became the winning architecture to generate exciting new results in object recognition. This is a computer telling us this picture contains a cat and where the cat is. Of course, there are more things than cats. So here is a computer algorithm telling us the picture contains a boy and a teddy bear, a dog, a person, and a small kite in the background or a picture of very busy things, like a man, a skateboard, railings, and lampposts, and so on. Sometimes, when the computer is not so confident about what it sees, <laughs> we have taught it to be smart enough to give us a safe answer instead of committing too much, just like we would do. But other times, our computer algorithm is remarkable at telling us what exactly the objects are, like the make, model, year of the cars. We apply this algorithm to millions of Google Street View images across hundreds of American cities. And we have learned something really interesting. First, it's confirmed our common wisdom that car prices correlate very well with household incomes. But surprisingly, car prices also correlate well with crime rates in cities or voting patterns by zip codes. So wait a minute, is that it? Has computer already matched or even surpassed human capabilities? Not so fast. So far, we have just taught the computer to see objects. This is like a small child learning to utter a few nouns. It's an incredible accomplishment, but it's only the first step. Soon, another developmental milestone will hit, and children begin to communicate in sentences. So instead of saying, this is a cat in the picture, you already heard the little girl telling us, this is a cat lying on a bed. So to teach a computer to see a picture and generate sentences, the marriage between big data and machine learning algorithm has to take another step. Now, the computer has to learn from both pictures as well as natural language sentences generated by humans. Just like the brain integrates vision and language, we developed a model that connects parts of visual scenes, like visual snippets, with words and phrases in sentences. About four months ago, we finally tied all this together and produced one of the first computer vision models that is capable of generating a human-like sentence when it sees a picture for the first time. Now, I'm ready to show you what the computer says when it sees the picture that the little girl saw at the beginning of this talk. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. A large airplane sitting on top of an airport runway. Of course, 
we're still working hard to improve our algorithms, and it still has a lot to learn. And the computer still makes mistakes. So, of course, when it sees too many cats, it thinks everything might look like a cat. <laughs> or if it hasn't seen a toothbrush, it confuses a baseball bat. A man riding a horse down the street next to a building. We haven't taught Art 101 to the computers. A zebra standing in a field of grass. And it hasn't learned to appreciate the stunning beauty of nature like you and I do. So it has been a long journey. To get from age zero to three was hard. The real challenge is to go from three to 13 and far beyond. Let me remind you with this picture of the boy and the cake again. So far, we have taught the computer to see objects or even tell us a simple story when seeing a picture. A person sitting at a table with a cake. But there's so much more to this picture than just a person and a cake. What the computer doesn't see is that this is a special Italian cake that's only served during Easter time. The boy is wearing his favorite t-shirt given to him as a gift by his father after a trip to Sydney. And you and I can all tell how happy he is and what's exactly on his mind at that moment. This is my son, Leo. On my quest for visual intelligence, I think of Leo constantly and the future world he will live in. When machines can see, doctors and nurses will have extra pairs of tireless eyes to help them to diagnose and take care of patients. Cars will run smarter and safer on the road. Robots, not just humans, will help us to break the disaster zones to save the trapped and wounded. We will discover new species, better materials, and explore unseen frontiers with the help of the machines. Little by little, we're giving sights to the machines. First, we teach them to see. Then, they help us to see better. For the first time, human eyes won't be the only ones pondering and exploring our world. We will not only use the machines of their intelligence, we will also collaborate with them in ways that we cannot even imagine. This is my quest, to give computer visual intelligence and to create a better future for Leo and for the world. Thank you.
or you pump a class or lab practical and you ask a friend kya kya hua so if you just send uh, uh, your own mobile camera or, or if there is a camera somewhere the camera should be able to tell you or the software should be able to tell you kya hua so i mean not just the movements at all the nitty gritty is how you at the human level the intelligence should be human level so i'll just tell, uh, show you uh, some recent trends in image and signal processing this is another presentation a presentation will be number 80 so uh, when you see a picture uh, why do we say a picture represents i mean a picture is worth a thousand words why do we say that anyone any idea have you heard this thing a picture is worth a thousand words uh, why do we say that anyone just come I in mean, just raise your hand and start speaking is it so difficult Why is a picture worth a thousand words? Everyone can make out something different from the same picture. Exactly. So a picture uh, is basically not serial. So uh, when you read a book, I mean, uh, how many of you have uh, watched Harry Potter movies? And how many of you have read the books? So I definitely see that the number of people who have read the books is less than the number of people who have watched the movies. The reason? It's effortless to watch movies, whereas it takes effort. <laughs> it takes effort to sit with a book. Okay, so uh, I mean, like Dr. Lee said, it has taken evolution 540 million years to make it so easy and effortless for us to understand images and videos and sounds. So I mean, frankly speaking, it is more difficult than reading a book, actually. but it is happening automatically you you are not i mean consciously making an effort to understand the movie unless it is like memento <laughs> or in or inception so so i mean movies are just effortless so that is the reason we say movies are i mean picture is worth the thousand words so this is picture the most famous picture you could say then another picture you see another uh, emotion comes to your mind or something different comes to your mind So you see Joker, you say, "Wow, the most badass villain," or "Wow, I mean, the best villain ever." Then you see this picture, and another different emotion comes to your mind, right? And it's not necessary that everyone will have the same interpretation of this picture. Okay. So the big AI dream is general AI. General AI is what we are. So we do multiple tasks. and with unprecedented efficiency so that is general ai machine learning is where it is specific to a task so some intelligence some ai which is specific to a task so how many of you have email ids are the actually people who don't have email ids <laughs> okay so uh, everyone must have seen spam email sometime okay so these days we don't even have to open it it automatically is routed to the spam folder how is it done it's done on based based on machine learning so i'll just give you a give you a very short example of how spamming and the other word is ham so non spam email is called ham so uh, let's say uh, you get an email by a camera and then you get so let's say this is first example and then suppose you get another example where uh, another email where it says um, uh, computer vision assignment okay uh, so how is it sorted automatically i'll just tell you an example so what is done is uh, every word that you get in an email is basically uh, first what is done is humans are employed to find out if an email is actually spam or ham okay so after the training data is complete so we have uh, lakhs of emails and their labels so we have a table with lakhs of emails and their labels so it is spam or ham Spam, spam, ham, ham, whatever, like this. So once we get that 
training data, what is done is each word, how many times it has appeared in spam or ham, is given a fraction or a percentage probability. That uh, let's call it spamminess or hamminess. Uh, spamminess. Happiness. So each word gets its own fraction. So by how many? Uh, I mean, how many times have you seen by in a spam email and handy? So by is most probably a spammy word. So it gets a 80% probability that it is a spammy word. A is very general, so it we can just ignore it. It's a it's an article. Uh, camera is another word. So camera could be. Um, Let's say it could get a probability of 0.4, spamminess probability. So S is, and then uh, say computer. So computer gets a spamminess probability of. So uh, do you realize that spamminess is equal to one minus spamminess? Okay. So that's the whole picture. So uh, suppose computer gets a probability of 0.3 of spamminess. Uh, vision gets a probability of 0.2, and assignment gets a probability of 0.1. Okay. Now what you do is you just combine all these and multiply them. So how many times pi has appeared into 0.8? So 0.8 plus 0.4 divided by 1 plus 1 that is 2. So what do you get? 1.2 upon 2. So you get a probability that this is 60% spam. Okay, and then for 0 0.3 into 0.0.3 uh, 0 and 0.2 plus 0 0.2 upon 2 so 0 0.5 upon 2 is equal to 0 0.25. So this is probably not spam. So this is how uh, you know automatically emails are routed to spam or ham. Sometimes it happens that. Uh, if you get uh, emails from events like this or emails from some new person, they'll ask you just take in the spam folder. Because these days we also have the capacity to, uh, or we have been given an option to mark the email as spam or ham. So that is additional training for that uh, email provider. Okay. So this is a machine learning workspace. So uh, machine learning is for specific tasks. Computer vision is image processing applied to machine learning. So uh, image processing is like input is an image and output is an image. So probably uh, it's an MRI image. So MRI image goes in and a enhanced or a better looking MRI image comes out. So that is image processing. Computer vision is whereas is image goes in and data comes out, actionable data. So some, some data that you can use. So for example, if an MRI image goes in, a brain MRI image, and if it says that there is a tumor present, then that's an actionable data item. So it will give a probability, uh, some probability of what, what is the probability that this MRI image contains a tumor. So that is computer vision. Then uh, image processing and image processing is two-dimensional. Then we have signal processing, which is one-dimensional, single-dimensional. So I'll just uh, summarize what is uh, signal by image processing used for. It is used for pleasure and comfort. Uh, it is used for automation, robotics, creative expression. So we have these HDR. Uh, software these days, or HDR mode of your camera, then it is used in life sciences like I told you in the heart, heartbeat or surgery kind of sections or radiotherapy, radiology sections, defense and strategy, environmental studies, these days it is also used for finding out uh, you know how much water is present in each reservoir, in each dam and what is the percentage of uh, afforestation or deforestation in particular geographical area, movies and gaming it is used, we will see all examples uh, right now. Uh, productivity and hazards. So productivity is where cars are assembled using robots, not not by humans these days. Have you seen such videos where cars are made using robotic arms? Uh, then MRI and CT PET scans, compression. So these days you, everyone uses WhatsApp, but WhatsApp automatically compresses an image. So if you want to if you want a compressed image, you send it some, to someone in WhatsApp. It will automatically get compressed. The spy satellites, night vision system. This is for intrusion or infiltration detection. Uh, GIS is geographical information systems. So, what is image processing or computer vision in general? It is 
perform some mathematical operations on these images to facilitate any of the above results or the results that we saw. Uh, these are uh, color spaces. We, basically, I am not going to teach you how to do computer vision. I am just telling you what are the applications of computer vision. We will come to the part of teaching yourself or teaching someone else teaching you later. Okay, uh, now we have a very fascinating example. Uh, how many of you have heard since school time, you can fish market in your class? <laughs> right? Third? Or teacher will say, uh, please one, one at a time, one at a time, not everyone at a time. Okay, so um, these days machine learning has facilitated, if everyone speaks at a time, still we can separate out their voices. I'll just show you a small demo. So, two microphones are kept in a room and two voices or two sounds are produced and computer vision, I mean, uh, machine learning will separate these sounds programmatically. Okay, let's see how it does it. So, first we will we'll listen to the original sound. So, this is microphone one. And then the 